Today we are tackling one of the most widely held beliefs about a specific kitchen appliance and its effect on nutrients, the microwave. Many people believe that microwaving kills all the nutrients in food. It's a debate that has lead to some concerns over the years and every once in a while it pops up again. So if all that sounds good to you, let's go. Hi folks, welcome to my channel or welcome back. My name is Kat, I'm a licensed and registered dietitian nutritionist and on this channel I like to talk about weight inclusive and weight neutral focused approaches to health as well as diving into scammy and in my opinion unethical nutrition related businesses, products, mostly nutrition related MLMs and other fear mongering nutrition related claims. Now in today's video we are talking about the effects or the concerns around using a microwave and its potential impacts on the nutrient quality or the nutrient density of our foods. Now microwaves have been a staple in many people's kitchen as a way of helping with convenience of heating foods up again, but some people have a concern if that comes at a cost to the nutrition in the food. Now to help understand the impact of microwaving and the effects that it has or doesn't have on our foods, it's important to grasp how they work in the first place. So microwaves don't cook foods in like a traditional kind of sense. Instead, they use electromagnetic radiation. Now that radiation causes all the little water molecules that is in the food itself to start moving around rapidly. And that movement creates the heat to heat up the food. It's a bit like friction whenever you're rubbing your hands together and you feel that kind of warmth. Similar idea. Now this method is different from conventional cooking, whether you are like boiling or steaming or stir frying, where you're actually applying heat to it. Now with any kind of cooking method, there are some changes in the composition or there can be some changes in the composition. For instance, if you're boiling a vegetable, there's a lot of what is called water soluble vitamins. And so one of the concerns around boiling vegetables, for example, is those water soluble vitamins like vitamin C, B vitamins as well being like leached out into the water versus is something like steaming which can help to preserve some of those water soluble vitamins. Now it's important to note that every kind of cooking method overall can contribute to some kind of nutrient loss. At that same time they can also help with nutrient bioavailability which is just a fancy way of talking about how the body is able to use something. It's more like useful, readily useful, available for the body to use in any way that it needs to use it. Now the key is understanding the significance of that loss and recognizing how that fits into an overall nutrient dense intake. Now I want to back up a little bit. I talked about the way the cooking method, so the electromagnetic radiation, and radiation can sound a little bit scary I think to many people. Understandably so. That term itself, the name radiation, can cause concern because of its association with harmful kind of forms of radiation like nuclear radiation for example, or like the radiation in x-rays. However, it's important to note that the type that is used in microwaves is significantly different. Microwave ovens specifically use Use electromagnetic radiation. Now this type of radiation is what is called non-ionizing. That means that it does not have enough energy to remove the electrons from the atoms or from the molecules. So if you like go back to, so I, I don't know, I was homeschooled so I don't know like what grade this is taught in, but I'll put up a picture. It is not enough to separate those electrons from the atoms and the molecules. And therefore it doesn't damage the chemical structures of the food or make them radio active and it's on the lower side of the electromagnetic spectrum overall much like radio waves for example the energy that it provides is specifically for exciting those kind of like water molecules like making them move really fast and creating that kind of heat and this is why sometimes you might find different parts of what is microwave to be more heated and not so heated and as certain parts of the microwave food is heated the other parts if it's like lower in water or those aren't moving as much in a similar way of like a conventional cooking that heat itself will spread so it's the water molecules, but then also the heat itself that can help with the rest of the food. That's why sometimes a lot of times things will say to leave that food in the microwave for like a minute or two, just to kind of spread that heat around. So that is a lot different than like harmful radiation, like x-rays or gamma rays, which are ionizing, which carries enough energy to ionize those atoms, molecules, and that is what causes a damage to cells and DNA. That is very different from the microwave. So many times in nutrition misinformation that I have 
found is that when someone has some concerns over something, a lot of times that is increased without understanding kind of the mechanism behind it. So part of me making this series overall and the point of my channel is to help people feel more empowered around their food choices and to address any fear around their food choices as well in an evidence-based kind of way. Now it's important to note that microwaves have so many safety features that are built in or that are required for them to have numerous safety features. When the microwave is used as intended, when the door is shut and it's not like broken or anything like that, they are safe and don't pose a risk from that radiation. The designs of the microwave are used to ensure that those microwaves are contained when the microwave is shut and it's turned on. Now, specifically getting into nutrient concerns, nutrient loss. Now, there are so many different methods of cooking foods and within each of them, there are pros and cons and there is often in a kind of reduction or there can be a reduction in some nutrients while there can be an increase in the bioavailability of others. Now this is particularly true mostly to when we're talking about the depletion mostly around water soluble vitamins so like B vitamins and vitamin C. Those can be sensitive to light and heat and overall air exposure. So like in boiling some of those nutrients can be leached out and in methods with high heat some of those nutrients can go through like degradation. Now it is important to note that while cooking can reduce or can increase some nutrient loss, it also makes certain nutrients more readily available, better able to be absorbed and used by the body. And the cooking process kills harmful bacteria, making food safer to eat. Now I want to read a little excerpt from the World Health Organization regarding microwaves. They say that because of the potential for uneven distribution of cooking, food heated in a microwave oven should rest a few minutes after cooking is completed to allow the heat to distribute throughout the food. Food cooked in the microwave oven is safe and has the same nutrient value as foods cooked in a conventional oven. Like the change overall is not significant. The main difference between these two methods of cooking is that the microwave energy penetrates deeper into the food and reduces the time for heat to be conducted throughout the food, thus reducing the overall cooking time, which can be very beneficial. There are so many reasons why someone might choose to use a microwave oven, one including the time piece. Now from the FDA, they say microwaves cause water molecules in food to vibrate, producing heat that cooks the food. That's why foods that are high in water content, like fresh vegetables, can be cooked more quickly than other foods. The microwave energy is changed to heat as it is absorbed by the food and does not make the food radioactive or contaminated. Although heat is produced directly in the food, microwave ovens do not cook food from the inside out. When thick foods are cooked, the outer layers are heated and cooked primarily by microwaves, while the inside is cooked mainly by the conduction of the heat from the hot outer layers. Overall, microwave cooking can be more energy efficient than conventional cooking because foods cook faster and the energy heats the only the food, not the whole component, like an oven would. And they also mentioned that because of the reduced heating time and the amount of time in cooking can impact nutrient losses. Again, not like really significant, but because of the shortened time, it can actually help to keep more of the nutrients overall. So it's not like a, I'm gonna say that you should use a microwave or you should not use it. It's just, it can fit in a very nutrient dense kind of intake and it's not something to be fearful of. A significant amount of data is available on the effects of microwaves and the micronutrients. And overall, there's just very slight differences in the amount of nutrient retention after. Nothing significant and nothing enough to change your kind of behavior around, like if you were using it or not using it. Now I do have some tips for optimizing nutrient retention. And one of those would be not using too much water. So using some that's helpful for the heating process, but too much if you are gonna drain that then you might potentially be draining a lot of those more water soluble vitamins and so one of the things I do for example is for my toddler he loves peas so much and so when I'm reheating that I'll have some water in there and at the end of the heating in the microwave if there is like excess amount of water there I'll pour that water onto another part of his food so like if there's meat I'll put it on there to make it a little bit like softer especially if there's like a sauce with the meats that extra water will just like not really make a big impact on the meat itself or the sauce but it allows me to keep some of that water for him to consume rather than me just draining it down the sink another tip is to not like overheat overcooking can not only affect the texture and the taste of the food but it can also increase the degradation or the breakdown of nutrients and so just make sure that you're not like overcooking something and then if you want to just kind of stir the food midway in the microwaving process that can help with the overall heat distribution which might also help with the reduced overall time that it needs to heat up. 
Now, I also want to encourage you to use microwave safe containers, avoid harmful like plastics in there that are not made to be in the microwave. So like no butter tubs or like traditional takeout boxes and just in general to use microwave safe containers. I typically will use glass or ceramic. As I kind of wrap up, remember that microwaves have a lot of regulation surrounding them and they are safe to use when used appropriately with the door closed. The radiation process from microwaves is not something to fear. It's a convenient, safe, and efficient way of heating food and cooking. Just like any other kitchen appliance, use it responsibly and correctly to ensure your safety and the quality of your meals. That wraps it up for this video. Please leave a like if you liked it. Make sure you're subscribed. I would greatly appreciate that. Let me know if you've learned anything from this video. Maybe if you had some fears around microwaves, maybe it alleviated some of those or provided you with some information to do more information gathering. I would love to hear about it. That wraps it up for this video. Remember, you can strive for health without subscribing to diet culture. I'll see you later. Bye.